Hey, welcome back. My name's Cam Flurry, and last week I put a poll up on my community tab asking you what level of a drummer you thought you were. Most of you answered intermediate, and while there's no wrong answer to this, it seems that the more you progress as a drummer, the more you think you're lower in a certain class. And I wanna provide you with 10 drumming tips that'll help you potentially break into some more advanced concepts and rhythms and ways of thinking about drums and being able to apply them to the drum set. So let's get started working our way back from number 10 all the way up to number one. Number 10 is practicing your dynamics. One of the pillars and most important parts about music, and if we didn't have it, it would sound like a complete mess because then we wouldn't be able to emit our emotion properly through our music and notation. So if you were to just play like a straight beat through something soft that required a little bit of more finesse into your playing, then it wouldn't quite resonate well with the listener. So when we structure music, we need to have at least three or four of these things, and that's rhythm, harmony, melody, and then dynamics. Now, as drummers, we possess two of those things, rhythm and dynamics. So by focusing on that in our playing and trying to emphasize the way we play dynamics, it can really help us convey different passages and messages throughout our music. That is, if we're playing with a band in, in a musical context. Number nine on this list is coordination. As a drummer, we need to be coordinated. We need to be able to be flexible with what limb is playing what during different passages. If you're looking for some really good books and literature on coordination and independence, I highly suggest checking out Jim Chapin's book, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer. Now, the applications in this book are towards bebop and jazz styles, but a lot of the methods and techniques inside this book can be applied to drum set in various styles of music. The idea behind this book is to improve your independence and your coordination. If you really wanna become free of all of your limbs, then I really do highly suggest this book by Jim Chapin. It's one of the best in the world, if not the best book in the world that talks about this subject. Number seven on this list is that playing fast doesn't necessarily equate to being a good player. Fast is part of the puzzle, and like every other thing that you learn on the drum set, they all add up in the ability to being a comprehensive drummer. So what I wanna to communicate to you is to understand that just because you can play it fast does not mean you can hear it properly, or does not mean you can actually understand what you're playing. Slow it down, take it easy, go through it, learn it properly, make sure you've got proper grip and proper technique before you try and play it fast. Because let's be honest, the only people you're impressing by playing fast are your friends and family. So if your goal is to play fast, then I want you to stop there for a minute, and I really want you to dig deep with drumming, because drumming is much deeper and rhythm is a heck of a lot deeper than just having the ability to play fast. If you're playing in metal, obviously fast is part of the equation because that's what the music calls for. But if you're playing any other style of music or anything that requires rhythm, which is practically all music, then fast doesn't work in each musical application. So what I'm really getting at is that fast is not everything and rhythm is everything. And once you start to understand what rhythm has to offer in all different styles, then you'll start to be able to understand why only playing fast is just a fraction of the macro of what is music and rhythm. Maybe you can play a lot of different patterns and grooves and beats by ear, but what's really important when it comes to music and being able to understand the material is learning how to sight read. And that means reading the book upright. So I have a suggestion for you. If you don't own any drum books and you've heard of stick control, I highly suggest checking out Louis Belson's Modern Reading in 4-4 Time. This is one of the first books I started off on as a young drummer with some of my private teachers. This really helped me understand how to read ties, how to read whole notes, how to read dotted eighth notes and sixteenth notes and all that good stuff from applying it to the snare drum to around the kit and being able to formulate a proper phrase and being able to orchestrate it on the drums is what really came out of being able to sight read. So if you're an intermediate drummer and you can kind of sight read, I definitely implore you to check out this book because it's helped me immensely among with a bunch of other books that I have in my collection to gain vast knowledge of what sight reading is and how to understand a musical piece so that it'll better you and how it better me as a drummer to progress musically. Number five, you've probably heard countless times before, it's practice to a metronome. There's no reason not to have a metronome. I've got one on my phone here, it's just called Pro Metronome and it's more than what you need. But what I really suggest you do 
is to look into how to further push the use of your metronome and how you can explore it to better your drumming and your musicality. So one thing I would suggest for you to do is to create gaps in between all the beats so you can see if your internal time or your micro time, the little notes that don't exist on the paper between the big notes, is actually in time. So the idea with the metronome is that obviously we want to have good time because we are the timekeepers. We are the backbone, we're the rhythm of the band or we're the rhythm of the piece of music. But what happens live or in a setting where the click track goes out or you can't hear the rest of the band members? Are you able to still keep time? Is that something you can internalize? So I want you to kind of get that mindset of, okay, I've got these basic tools, but how do I think deeper about the tools that I have available to me so that it can progress me even further? So what are some little changes I can make with the things I already have that'll give me an even bigger return on my ability to practice efficiently so I can achieve better results on the drum set? Number four is learning to play with other musicians. It'll create and internalize not only good and proper time, but it'll increase your listening ability. And I think that's one of the most important things that we don't talk about enough as drummers is our ability to listen, communicate with our drums, and then take that information back from what they heard from us play and then translate it into our playing again. More or less kind of like a call and response kind of reaction. But what that's doing is creating a feedback loop for your playing. And you'll notice that once they start to understand what kind of feel you have on the drum set, the more they'll be able to play along to you instead of just playing their parts over top of yours. Now I understand because of the current state of events, it's rather difficult to get in the same room as a different musician. So if you can find somebody to send you tracks, then I highly suggest getting them to send some original takes along to a metronome, and then you can kind of play along to it and send it back and forth. That way you can work on listening and learning and growing as a musician by playing with other musicians. Number three on this list is super useful. And that is, don't be an asshole. Nobody likes working with somebody like that or who's difficult to work with because they'll never work with you again. And I hate to admit it, but the music industry and the music business is much smaller than you think. So if you come across as an asshole or you say something rude to somebody, that word will definitely travel around and a lot less people will want to work with you. So if you're working with other musicians, don't try and be the nicest guy ever. Be yourself. But remember, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. And I think that's something I really want to drive home because when musicians are joining other groups and they're hired on as a session musician to work for somebody else, then you got to understand that it's not about you, it's about them. And once you realize that and you give it your all, and when you try and provide them the best value that you can give, then you'll be surprised at the amount of respect that they have for you and how fast word will travel that you're such a great person to deal with. So it's really interesting because you've probably heard of guys like Buddy Rich not being the nicest to get along with, but you gotta understand that obviously aside from his credibility and his ability to play, that word still got out how he was as a person and how he made them feel. Remember, it's not what you said to somebody, not what you did for somebody, but it's how you made them feel that is going to leave a lasting impression. I think the expectation needs to be there and it needs to be communicated properly. Everybody likes somebody who's easy to get along with. And if you're not easy to get along with, there's gonna be tension and there's gonna be a lot of creative blocks when it comes to writing something musically with another group of people. So don't be that guy, don't be an asshat, don't be an asshole, don't be any of that. Try and be cool and just go with the flow, be a phantom, get in there and go, and then walk out, your job is done. But most importantly, make sure to be nice. So number two is that music is not a competition. I don't remember ever turning on the TV to watch the Olympics and seeing music as a category. I don't think music is competition. What I do think it is, is a reflection of our inner self through expression of art. So if you start to treat it like a competition or like a job, it just loses the joy of the whole thing. And you get caught up in the process of always comparing yourself to the next player that you see on social media that has so many followers, which is just a vanity metric anyway, really lose track of what brought you towards playing drums in the first place. And that is joy. And that brings me on to number one. And the number one most important thing on my list for you is remember to have fun. I don't know how many times people get so caught up in making it a business and forgetting why they actually started playing the instrument in the first place. If you're a longtime subscriber of this channel, you'll know I like to do mashups of different drummers. And I kind of got off track there for a little bit and everybody started picking on certain drummers. And I've since kind of disregarded that idea and started giving more to you guys and trying to empower you to become a better drummer. And that for me is what brings me the most joy. I think with drums, having 
fun is the number one most important thing. And I think if we lose the joy in music, in drumming, then it's really disheartening because that's what we wanted to do. We, we liked giggling when we first started playing drums. We got that first beat nailed. We were able to play it really, really well. And it made us feel good about ourselves. It made us want to get better. And I think that's the whole part of the journey towards progressing and mastering this instrument. It's the journey itself and the joy that brings us. And I think ultimately deep down inside, joy is what really pushes us to want to be the best we can be. And that has nothing to do with competing with other drummers. That is just a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think if you lose the joy in progressing in that journey towards mastering your instrument, you really start to lose focus on what it is you wanted to do in the first place. And I know for me, by using this platform on YouTube to help educate you, it brings me much joy because I get to see all the comments from you guys down below and I'm able to create an impact with drummers and in the drumming community. So just remember that if you're feeling down on yourself, take some time away and remember you need to have fun. So those are my 10 tips for intermediate drummers. If you have any tips that you think should be added to this list, or if you want to include your own personal list down in the comments below, I really do encourage you to do that. And also take my tips with a grain of salt. This is just my perception of the instrument. So your mileage may vary as well, but if you want to write down below what you think, and let me know some things that maybe I could elaborate on in future videos, then I'd be more than happy to spread the wealth of information that I've gathered over the years. Thanks so much for watching the video. My name's Cam Flurry, and I'll see you in the next one.